Uh, thank you to ABPI for inviting me to talk to you this morning. Um, I'm going to talk to you about data, which somebody famous said was the new oil of, of industry um, in, its, uh, in terms of its vital and importance to making industry work. So winning the race for usable data, um, and it really is a race uh, for me in terms of where, where we're at. Um, I'm going to talk to you about what I see some of the challenges are, what are the, the vital components that we need to put in place to win the race, some of the things that my organisation has done and a few finishing remarks on, uh, on strategy. So um, we've seen an explosion of clinical data over the last few years, and indeed over the last decade, uh, on a scale of which we've, uh, we've not seen before. Data is electronically captured in hospitals um, in new ways, uh, where it used to be captured on paper. There is still a long way to go, still a journey to be had, but there's been a proliferation of this data um, over the last uh, 10, 10, 15 years, and that's set to get, get bigger and more so. We've got new types of data being generated in new ways, from apps and wearables, and new different types of clinical data being generated on a whole new scale, such as uh, genomics um, and the 100,000 Genomes Project. So a huge proliferation, and that's set to continue, get, get bigger. What do we need to put in place um, to make sure that we're able to use that data, and what are some of the challenges that we, uh, that we face around that. So winning the race, there are four key component parts I'm going to talk to you about um, as to the key aspects that I see that we need to put in place to make sure that we win this race for usable data. Continuing the journey that we've started with the investment in our technical infrastructure, making sure that we have the platform to house, store, and analyze the data, and making sure that the uh, data is accessible in the right parts of the, of the system. The investment that's been started and uh, already committed to and set to, set to continue. Making sure that we have the right standards, that we set the right standards so that data, wherever it is captured um, in the NHS, is captured with the same integrity and consistency regardless of where, where it is captured, so that all parts of the NHS data uh, can be uh, compared. Enabling this data to be uh, joined and linked, um, and also um, meaning that we can uh, join that data to other parts of the, org of, uh, the health system um, and analyze it. Governance and trust, making sure that we are transparent to patients around how the data is used and that its value is really well communicated. And the language that we use around this data and how we communicate with patients um, is vital uh, to make sure that we maintain patient and, uh, and public trust. Um, I'm just going to give you an anecdote. I was involved in leading a technology development in the past um, where we built a patient portal enabling patients to access our electronic patient record. And we just created a, a tick box to enable them to, uh, for us to contact them, to talk to them about research. Uh, and when we launched it, um, nobody was ticking the box, nobody was interested. And we looked at the language that was used and the te technology uh, team that had built the system had written, um, if you'd like to get involved in complex clinical research, tick this box. Um, nobody, unsurprisingly, nobody ticked it. Um, so we rightfully changed it to, uh, from time to time, we may contact you about research that could benefit other patients no commitment will be made of you uh, until we've got your agreement. Everybody ticked it. Um, so the language that we use around this um, is, uh, is vitally important. Um, I'm just going to talk you through a couple of slides, one that I've stole from Ipsos Mori, where you can see the different types of uses of data where they've surveyed the public around what they deem to be acceptable. And you can see some obvious ones in the bottom left-hand corner, energy companies monitoring when people get home. Um, perhaps not acceptable, right up to tackling fraud um, and uh, GPs and hospitals being able to access your health records to deliver care. And I've done a slight adaptation of that, which I'm just going to talk through. And the colours represent patients' understanding of what data is being used for. Um, I hope the mic continues, or you can turn me on with my mic to up mic. Um, so in the bottom left-hand corner, fairly obvious, hospital doctor using my data to treat me, okay. And then we move up and move away. 
away from that, where the patients become less clear about the organisation that's using their data. And we've got a spectrum here of moving from the primary purpose, you're treating me, to these other different types of activities, big data trials, aggregate analysis away. And where we are on this spectrum, winning this race, is linked to our ability to be able to communicate the benefit and being transparent about the use of patient data. So where are we on that journey is our ability for us to communicate and what I've called the, uh, the spectrum of trust. The final aspect around this is flow and collection. We have fantastic pockets of data existing in the NHS and in hospitals. And the fourth and final part, as I say, is ensuring that this data can flow easily and securely and officially into the right infrastructure and platforms to enable us to be able to uh, analyse it and not place greater burden on organisations in flowing this data. And also flow and release the pockets of rich data that already exist that can really support life science, such as laboratory data. So all of these aspects need to come together to form the building blocks of life science research. We also need to get the balance right between um, regional and national. And this is not an either or, but both. It was mentioned earlier, the Salford Lung Study. That's a fantastic local innovation. And we need to stimulate and support local innovation at the front line. But also maximise the use of the national data sets that we have, the N in the NHS. We have very rich data sets held nationally and we need to make the most um, of their use uh, by linking and being able to give it a, a good picture uh, around, around the national, national health position. So our organisation, um, our role in this uh, to support the winning of the race needs to be speeding up the process uh, of which we process national data, how quickly we're able to release it, um, engaging the faster flow of data nationally, uh, creating better access, subscribing to data, and implementing new uh, visualization tools uh, to enable organizations to innovate and use the data that we, that we collect. So we outlined a lot of these activities already that was published in our uh, strategy last year uh, in November um, to, uh, to enable the, the, the race to be won. And our key uh, aspects that we focused in on, which I'm just going to finish, were around enabling you and, and, and life science to innovate, stimulate, and collaborate over the national health data sets that we, uh, that we have. Thank you, everyone.